Hi, my name is Andre Jick. Hope you're doing well, come for the finance, and stay for the down. So Robinhood, the world's most popular stock trading app. The app that a ton of people started investing with, it's the app that I started with way back in 2014, just got served. So this Wednesday, June 30th, Finra.org put out this statement. Finra ordered to pay approximately $70 million for systemic supervisory failures and significant harm suffered by millions of customers. So in today's video, I wanna go over everything that's been happening and what Finra has accused Robinhood of doing, and also because that's $70 million that's in the headline is not all gonna be given to customers. In fact, $57.4 million is just gonna be given to FINRA and the other $12.6 million is going to customers for restitution. Now, restitution is just legal speak for compensating customers and making them whole again. But wait a minute, Andre, is it actually FINRA or is it Shinra? So you might remember, between 2015 and 2018, Robinhood was fined because they lied to their customers about how they were making money, which was taking payments for order flow. Now, instead of routing our orders for the stocks we wanted to buy to market makers that were gonna give us the best stock prices, instead, they were routing our orders to market makers that didn't give us the best stock prices because they were financially incentivized to do so. Market makers like Citadel, for example. Now, even though the average trade probably only lost us fractions of a penny over the course of a few years and several hundred thousand trades, that made Robinhood a lot of money. And if you were affected by this, by the way, I'm gonna leave a link in the description below the video where if you scroll past page 34, you're gonna see all the money that Robinhood owes. Because Robinhood was releasing a ton of new features throughout the years and pushing the boundary, they didn't test these features at scale, which meant that those features ended up being buggy, inaccurate, and they took that risk at the expense of their customers. The worst example of how they misled customers is that they told regular users, the Robinhood instant accounts, that they could only trade on margin if they had a Robinhood Gold account. But the reality was you could trade on margin even if you didn't have Robinhood Gold and even if you had that feature turned off. And it turned out that over 818,000 people were affected by this and they were accidentally buying stocks on margin in some cases and in other cases they were shown negative account balances. The second infraction that FINRA alleges is the approval of said margin accounts. And this is because margin trading is one of, if not the riskiest things you can do in the stock market. In fact, sec.gov website right now shows that you need to have at least $2,000 with your broker or 100% of the purchase price of whatever security you're trying to buy on margin, whichever is less. But some of these brokers go above and beyond out of their way to make sure that their customers meet and exceed those expectations. In fact, you might even remember downloading some of these brokers and they'll ask you a survey of your trading experience, how long you've been doing it, what your goals are, your net worth, and this stuff is taken very very seriously. But according to this FINRA doc, it shows that Robinhood approved all the margin accounts to all their customers, regardless of how they answered those survey questions. You're 18 years old and you already have three years worth of trading experience? Mm -hmm. How is that possible if the minimum age is 18? Mm -hmm. And you have less than a thousand dollar net worth? Yep. Margin approved. Welcome to the casino. It's basically 2008 all over again, except instead of the subprime mortgage crisis like we had with real estate, this time around it's about giving everybody leverage, including, unfortunately, the accounts who might not have qualified to have leverage in the first place. And the third infraction that FINRA alleges is Robinhood's failure to have a plan in the case of a failure of service. Because remember, at the end of the day, all Robinhood is, is a platform that provides a service to the buyers, that's us, to buy stocks from the sellers, which are the market makers. At its core, that is Robinhood's technology. So it needs to have some sort of a backup in case that fails, or at least some sort of a backup plan, which they didn't have. And this, of course, is referring to the period between 2018 to 2020, which I'm sure all of us remember is when Robinhood stopped allowing people to trade. The worst of these days was between March 2nd and March March 3rd of 2020, when the market was in free fall and no one was able to sell their stocks or buy the dip, which means that customers lost on millions 
if not potentially billions of dollars worth of profit. That broke two of FINRA's rules, which is why Robinhood was fined. Also between 2018 and 2020, because of this information that was inaccurate and it was glitchy, some of the accounts were actually affected because they were forced to be liquidated and forced to cover their positions for absolutely no reason. Over 6 million Robinhood customers were affected by this. And of all the complaints that they received, they were supposed to work with FINRA to report what was going on. This is because every FINRA member is required to report statistical data quarterly. And in this case, Robinhood did not do that. In fact, their company policy exempted many of these complaints, which is why nothing ever got done, things got delayed month after month, or it was just swept under the rug. Another common complaint is bad ID verification practices, which was supposed to help customers not have their accounts stolen or broken into. And according to this FINRA report, Robinhood actually opened, without any manual review, something like 94% of accounts that their own clearing firm had flagged as an account that used a social security number that probably belonged to another person, but they opened it anyway. So for all those reasons, FINRA ordered Robinhood to pay $70 million, which sounds like a lot of money, until you realize this. Robinhood made $133 million from stock trades and about $198 million from options trading. That's a grand total of $331 million they made, not in a single year, but in the first quarter of this year. And of that money, about 43% of that came from Citadel, which was that market maker we talked about earlier. That $70 million fine, which sounds like a lot, represents only 21.1% of what they made in the first three months. And if you assume that they're gonna make roughly the same throughout the rest of the year, that's closer to about 5.25% of their annual income. Now, despite all the accusations and the thousands of customer complaints and the FINRA fines, Robinhood never issued a public apology, but they did make a blog post about what they'd improve and here's what they said. They're now offering phone support, finally, Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Standard Eastern Time. You can call them up and ask them about options trading. You can ask them about the equities market. You can ask them security questions. Apparently they hired several hundred new support members to help them out and they now have over 2,700 customer staff members, which is apparently triple that of what they had in March of 2020 and plans to double that in 2021. And the other thing they're trying to commit to is more financial education and more resources. So they wanna help beginner investors and they even cited my own YouTube channel. No, they didn't, that's a lie. I'm not sponsored by them. And I'm still not sponsored by anyone. So if you haven't already, go get those two free stocks with Webull when you deposit $100. You can get two free stocks valued up to $2,300. Shameless plug, over. Let's get back to the video. The other change this blog talks about is enhancing their anti-fraud protections, their compliance measures, so that they can better protect their customers from themselves. And the other thing they're doing is strengthening their infrastructure to handle more traffic by increasing system redundancy, spreading the load, so load distribution, as well as creating some kind of a system that is based on risk testing so that hopefully things like negative cash balances could be fixed. Unfortunately, nothing I've read inside of the FINRA report has anything to do with what happened when they stopped allowing to trade stocks like GameStop, Bed Bath & Beyond, BlackBerry, AMC. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. I do think that it's important to mention though that Robinhood is not the only brokerage that takes payments for order flow. There's other brokers that take these kickbacks or rebates like Ally Invest and TD Ameritrade and Charles Schwab and E-Trade. They all take payments for this kind of stuff. There's nothing out of the ordinary. That's just how business works in the financial markets, which is unfortunate. But here are my personal overall thoughts about everything that's going on. If there was one thing I wish Robinhood had more of is more transparency. Because in 2018, when they promised their customers this new feature of checking and savings accounts that were yielding them 3% returns on their money, that was also SIPC insured, but it wasn't, so they lied. And why would they do that? Maybe they thought they would get the insurance coverage when they released the features, but then at that point, why not just wait? So to me, my problem nowadays is less to do with Robinhood, which seems like it gets itself into trouble every single year, and more to do with how the financial industry decides to regulate itself. And if anything, this whole situation really sheds light on the amount of conflicts of interest that exist. And this is because if Robinhood is like eBay, which is just a platform that facilitates the exchange of money for stocks from the buyers to the sellers or the market makers, then in this case, it's almost like eBay was paid off by the sellers to show the buyers only items that are 
10% overinflated that would sometimes arrive to the wrong address. <laughs> like that would never be acceptable. So why is it okay in this case? Why is there not more reform? Oh, it's just complicated, Andre, you wouldn't understand. Most retail investors don't care about transparency and that's what we're told. But I think the more transparency we have in the financial markets, the better off brokerages like Robinhood will be because they'll have customers that are that much more loyal to them, which I think is important, especially when you're trying to go public. And the biggest issue I have is that this $70 million FINRA fine reads like a nice headline, but only $12.6 million of that money is restitution money. And I guess that's nice, but how do you calculate the opportunity cost of missing one of the most important weeks in the stock market? Like how do you calculate what you're owed when you don't know how much you could have made by selling that stock or by buying it during the dip? That I think is the most upsetting part. As for me personally, my main portfolio is within Robinhood. Like I said, I've had them since 2014 and I don't have plans to switch, but I'm waiting until the SEC tells us more about what happened with GameStop and then I'll make my decision. But for now, I'm not somebody who likes to day trade. I'm not an options trader. I don't borrow money on margin. I'm a boring, slow dividend investor or index fund investor. So to me, I don't really care. There's some days that I wake up and I'm like, oh, I didn't know that Robinhood was down for a whole day. But if you're somebody who likes to to invest and do things like options trading or day trading or borrow on margin, then Robinhood is probably not the best platform to use for that. If it were me, not financial advice, I'd probably use something like Charles Schwab, Fidelity or E-Trade and go with that. Now, if you're somebody who is worried about whether or not Robinhood is gonna continue to stay in business because all these lawsuits, remember this $70 million fine is just a small slap on the wrist in relation to how much they're worth and how much money they're making. Most of their clients are not people who like to meme invest. Most of their clients are not buying these stocks. They're not margin trading. So for them, it's just a small bump in the road and they might not even notice. So remember, even if Robinhood does go down, they are insured by SIPC. So SIPC insurance coverage means that if you have $500,000 or less in cash and stock in your account, you will get all that money back in the case that Robinhood fails as a business. Also, there were 2,832 accounts that were affected in the FINRA document, so make sure you check that out and double check your emails to make sure that you didn't get an email from Robinhood saying that they owe you money. If this video helped a little, don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe, and go get up to $250 worth of free Bitcoin using this BlockFi link right here, blockfi.com forward slash Andre. Go get your two free stocks with Webull. When you deposit $100, you can get stocks valued up to $2,300 in value, then go track them automatically with the spreadsheet link down below. Love you, thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you back here on Monday, Friday, sometimes Wednesday. And I'm really sorry that this video couldn't be more fun. It's a little depressing, but I felt it was pretty important to make. I'll see you soon, bye-bye.